And also, a gal's reach has got to exceed her grasp, or what's a metaphor? I'm bringing you a message from the Dew Line, way up north. You built us a fine place up there. Anytime you want to come and occupy it, you the whole bunch is welcome. But before I begin to speak of the city, I want to say something. And let's take into account all available assumptions to begin with. The um, man who made two X's on his legal form was announced by the lawyer, why two? He said, well, one is for my name and one is for my Ph.D. <laughs> you can see what's ahead of you. There is speaking of cooking, there was a gourmet from Virginia who went to Boston and the first thing he said to the cabbie was, take me where I can get scrod. <laughs> now Boston scrod is famous, but the cabbie didn't get the message and he turned around and he said, you know, I haven't heard the pluperfect subjunctive in many years. <laughs> Actually, true stories are far funnier than anything, anything that's been concocted by a joke smith, and this happened to me. Last year, I was coming back from Vancouver, and I landed at Kennedy Airport and was met by the Narcotics Division. And they said to me, do you know Tim O'Leary? And I said, I do. Well, where is, where is it? Where is the LLD? I said, it's in my bag. Open it. They examined my LLD and they said, you were heard on the plane to say that you had gone to Vancouver to pick up an LLD. Where is it? <laughs> they didn't know the difference. <laughs> you may have heard of the reporter who was sent out to get a cross section of popular opinion on big subjects like LSD. And his first customer or interlocutor was asked, what do you think of LSD? Well, he said, I know some hate his guts, but I think he's the greatest president we ever had. <clears throat> uh-huh. And what do you think of marijuana? Well, as for marijuana, my wife and I spent a week there last year, and it's terrific. Uh-huh. And what about the Vietnam position? Well, it's okay by me, but it gives my wife hiccups. Now you see a way up in the land of the due line where we have no personality, no national identity, and no commitments, and no involvement, humor, humor reigns supreme. Humor is grievance. I have a friend by the name of Professor Burgess at the University of Montreal, and he was standing at a lectern somewhat like this, incredibly complicated and useless for all human purposes. And he said, he laid down his script, looked around for the lectern light, pressed a button and the thing shot down below the stage and he disappeared with it. <laughs> Strike the set. The chairman sprang to his feet and said, our speaker needs no introduction, he's gone. <laughs> it's only a few days till they invent something for the audience to match that one. The speaker will remain and you will be gone. Dr. Gross and I were having a ball during lunch talking about things like near point and speed reading and the effect they have upon the publishing industry. I suppose you all have research men working on the effects of near point resulting from television. The average reading distance of the grade two child at the present time is 4.6 inches from the page. The printed page which you provide for school children is useless for the TV child. The TV child is a cyclops. He only uses one eye. He's a hunter. He is not a reader. But the near point child, all TV children read at 4.6 inches from the page, and you have not put a single researcher on this subject. Another little area that we were investigating during lunch was speed reading, which calls for total revolution in the printing process. However, let's get back to humor. 
Dr. Dolby, Dolbeer and I were discussing the joys of nomenclature. I received a book the other day from Mr. Harold Stammer called Speak That I May See Thee. Mr. Harold Stammer was the author. Mr. Harold Stammer was the author. I received another book from Russell Erb called The Common Sense of Smell. It's delightful. It's full of such items as this. If you spray a lion, an African lion, with catnip, it'll die of convulsions. <laughs> but Dr. Dolbear and I were talking about labels, and there is a famous book on chemical solutions. I collect these strange titles and names. Um, by W.C. Dampier Dampier Wedham, who lives at Upwater Lodge, Cambridge, England. The World Authority on Chemical Solutions is W.C. You know what that is. Dampier Dampier Wedham. And Dr. Gross told me he has a cousin called Dampier Dampier Wedham Bottom. <laughs> Do you know what diaper spell factors is? Just try it. It means repaid with interest. 